Welcome to my classroom. I am Nestle. In this video, I shall try to explain the general properties of ion channels. We know that three types of membrane potentials or bioelectrical potentials can be produced on the membranes of our cells. These are resting membrane potential, local potentials and action potentials. For the production of these electrical events, two types of proteins should be present in, on the membrane of our cells. The first group is ion transporters or ion pumps. These proteins are there to produce a concentration difference between the intracellular and extracellular fluid for our four ions, sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride. The second group of proteins that should be on the membrane are ion channels. Ion channels let the passage of ions through the membrane and produce the membrane potentials. And uh, it, it also makes use of the concentration difference that the first group transporters and pumps have produced. The ions pass to the membrane to produce the electrical activities. But why do they need ion channels? It's because the ions are covered by a water shell. Let's see how this happens. Water molecule has equal numbers of negative and positive charges in it, so it is neutral. But the distribution of those charges are not is not um, homogeneous. Oxygen tends to pull electrons, so it has a negative charge. Hydrogen tends to lose electrons, and it has a positive charge. These, the, this makes the water molecule dipolar. So the ions are also charged, so they tend to make electrostatic bonds with, with, with the water molecule. Sodium, potassium, calcium are positively charged, so they make electrostatic bonds with oxygen. Chloride is negatively charged, and so it makes uh, electrostatic bonds with hydrogen. So this results in a water shell around our ions. The water shell makes them lipophobic, unable to pass through the lipid membrane and it makes it hydrophilic, easily, more easily moving in water. So these ions, because they have a water shell, are not able to pass directly through the lipid membrane. They use ion channels. Uh, now we are going, I'm, I will start telling about the properties of ion channel. First property is that ion channels are proteins. Uh, they are integral or transmembrane proteins, which means they have a portion outside the membrane, within the membrane, and inside the membrane. They cross the membrane from one side to the other side, and so they are able to let the movement of ions from one side of the membrane to the other side. What are other properties? The second property is that the passage of ions through the ion channels is passive, which means it does not use uh, metabolic energy. No ATP consumption happens. The passage is by diffusion. Uh, actually, we, should, we could call it better electrodiffusion because the passive movement of ions are produced by two types of forces. One is the electrical force, which is the membrane potential. The other one is the concentration difference of the ion between the intracellular and extracellular fluids. This is the chemical force. So, the third property is that passage of ions through the channels is very quick. So the bioelectrical potentials or the membrane potentials are produced very quickly. That can be measured by milliseconds. The next property is that ion channels are selective. Some channels select for potassium, some for sodium, some for chloride. The selectivity is better in anion channels, like chloride channels only let the passage of chloride. But the selectivity of cation channels is a bit lower. For example, the leak channels for potassium that are responsible for the formation of a resting membrane potential uh, let the passage of uh, one sodium ion together with 100 potassium ions. Or the voltage-gated sodium channels that are responsible for the depolarization phase of action potential let the passage of 20 sodium ions together with maybe one potassium ion. So we say that anion channels are 
especially more selective, cation channels are less selective. But all channels are selective. Another property is that ions can be classified into two groups according to the direction in which they let the ions pass. So, we call them either ohmic channels or rectifying channels. In case of ohmic channels, the ions can pass in both directions, from inside of the cell to extracellular fluid or from extracellular fluid into the cell. Uh, the ions, if there is a force pushing them in either direction, there will be a movement of ion. So ohmic channels let the passage in both directions, but rectifying channels let the passage of ions in one direction. For example, Inward rectifying channels let the passage of ions into the cell when there is a force pushing the ion, but it won't let the uh, ions move out of the cell even if there's a force pushing the ion. So the second type is the outward rectifying channels, which is explaining itself that the, this type of channel, outward rectifying channel, lets the passage of ions outward, but not inward. Another classification of ion channels can be made depending on if they are gated or non-gated. So the first group is non-gated channels. This means that they are open all of the time and they are also called leak channels. The second group are gated channels. In case of gated channels, some conditions must be provided for the channel to open. So, what are these conditions? We have three types of conditions opening three different types of gated channel. The first one is mechanically gated channels. The exact mechanism of how a mechanically gated channels work is not clear, but according to the theories that I have read in the books, I have produced an imagination of it in my mind. So, let's say that you are touching your skin. You can see that there's a little bit of indentation, inward movement of the skin when you touch it. So take a very powerful microscope and approach the cells right under your finger that is touching. And let's say this is the membrane of the cell and my hands represent the mechanically gated channel. So when there is a force pushing downward because of your touch, maybe the mechanically gated channels are opening. The second group is voltage-gated channels. So we know that there's a voltage difference across the cell membrane. So this has to change for the voltage-gated channels to open. We are going to talk about them in more detail in the action potential video. The last type of gated channels are ligand-gated channels. Ligand is a chemical substance. So a chemical substance, a ligand, must bind to its receptor for the ion channel to open in case of ligand gated channels. The gating can be in two different ways. One can be direct, the second one can be indirect. In case of the direct one, the ligand is binding a receptor and this receptor is actually a piece of the protein that produces our ion channel. Or in other words, the receptor and the ion channel are the pieces of one single big protein. So, uh, a neurotransmitter comes from outside, it's a ligand. Calcium can come from inside the cell, it's another ligand. But this, if they are directly gating, they bind to the ion channel itself and this binding opens the ion channel. The second possibility is an indirect gated. In this condition, the receptor protein where our ligand binds is a separate protein and the ion channel is another separate protein. Of course, these are going to communicate. So the, when the ligand binds the receptor, it is going to start a second messenger pathway and this pathway is going to bring the signal to the ion channel and this is going to result in addition of a phosphate, phosphorylation of the ion channel which is going to open the channel. So this one is an indirect gating. Of course the receptor and the ion channel have to be situated very close to each other on the membrane for this to work. And phosphorylation most of the time opens an ion channel but at times it is possible that phosphorylation can close a channel. 
In the last part, I want to explain on a neuron where all these are located and what is their function. So, here we see a neuron, nucleus, soma, dendrites, axon, axon, initial segment of the axon, axon terminal, and uh, in myelinate, this is the axon. In case of myelinated axons, I have drawn the myelin here. And between each myelin, we have the Ranvier nodes. And I have added an unmyelinated axon here. Now let us place the ion channels on, the, on our neuron. The non-gated leak channels are present all over the membrane. So, and they are responsible for the formation of resting membrane potential. It is basically potassium leak channels and in some conditions a little bit of sodium leak channel contribution is possible. Um, what about mechanically gated and ligand gated channels? They are mainly on the soma or the dendrites and they are responsible for the local potentials. The last one, the last group is the voltage gated channels. They are located in the initial segment, all along the axon, in myelinated, in unmyelinated axons, at the Ranvier nodes in the myelinated axons, and they are responsible for the production and transmission of action potential. So in this video, I have tried to explain the general properties of ion channels. I hope it has been useful. Thank you for watching.